Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Tanya and I'm going to be hosting this podcast. This is our first episode and today I would like to introduce to you Paulina, our volunteer and former student. So Paulina, can you tell a little bit about you? Yes, hello everybody. My name is Paulina, I'm 16 years old and I've already been with Engine for almost two years. So firstly, I was uh, studying as a student then i chose a new path to become a volunteer and it was such a great experience for now uh, i really love figure skating i just in general do a lot of sports i really love playing tennis and um also i do drawing and playing professional golf so this like some hobbies about me some musician. okay that's very nice all right, uh, so tell me more about English. How did you start learning English in school, in kindergarten, just like your story? Um, I started learning English uh, since I went to school. Also, uh, at eight, in eighth grade, I applied to Ukraine Global Scholars Program for studying in US. And I think that was the first step for really deep learning English because I was about to face an interview and I really needed to improve my spoken English. I had to prepare for my English exam, for my math exam that was also in English. So that's actually when I found my mom, found the program engine and told me about it. And I registered for it. And that's how I started learning English with engine. All right. And like before eighth grade, did you talk to any foreigners or how did you practice your speaking skills? Of course, as I said before, I play intellectual game Go, and it's pretty international because I visited a lot of tournaments in different countries, started from Asia to Europe, and I had to have some conversations with uh, other players. So that's how I was practicing, but of course, it was not enough. It was only um, a little bit during the year, but I learned at school, so as well, there was some practice at school, but yeah. All right. Okay. So tell me, how did you apply to Engine? How was this process? Honestly, it started really funny. So I was 13 years old by that moment, and the Engine program was av available only for students uh, who are 14. And my mom uh, told me about this program. I was like, wow, that's a cool way. I really want to apply. And I got rejected because I was not 14 by that moment. I had to wait two weeks. It was two weeks until my birthday. So I had to wait two weeks and that was the first thing I did uh, after I turned 14. So yeah, I just I waited for a little bit and I got my volunteer and yeah, I started my sessions. So. All right. So like the application process, just like for the people who are only trying to apply right now, can you just explain if you remember what did you did, like some uh, interviews, application forms, maybe essays, what was that? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, so the first thing I did, I filled a small application just about myself, my personal information, how Engine can contact me. And then they texted me that I will have an interview with just 15 minutes interview to get to know me better. Maybe some preferences to have about volunteer or just my interest. So because Engine combines people uh, usually with a uh, common interest so they can get along easily and yeah then I had this interview it was pretty exciting I guess I just opened myself and engine got to know everything about me so I can get a perfect match of a volunteer yeah that's exactly the mission of our uh, interviews just to get to you the best option the best volunteer so you'll be comfortable during your pass and just like doing the conversations so tell me about your volunteer so my volunteer, my first volunteer was Hannah. And honestly, our experience was amazing as long as I remember it, because then uh, Hannah, she was supposed to apply to her college. So we couldn't have sessions anymore. But this year and a half, they were fascinating. All, all I can say about it, we had a lot of fun during session. We were not just like speaking, of course, we had some just speaking sessions. We were just like discussing some uh, life news, uh, moments from our life, our, I don't know, anything at all. And we're also studying for a little bit. So as I said before, I was preparing for my English exam for UGS and my math exam. And we were doing even some practice like SAT practice and we we're playing Kahoot 
that's actually how I got to know about Kahoot and how amazing this platform is. Uh, we were just doing some fun. And also, the uh, very popular game among us was um, by that time pretty, I don't know, common. Everyone was playing it. So we we're also having some fun playing among us. And uh, we also had like this group sessions. I don't know why, but Anna, Anna once asked me whether uh, I can, I want to talk to other her friends. And we created like a small group sessions. It was really, really exciting because I also got to know other um, American uh, peers. And we just had some kind of a group session uh, just out of engine. So. Okay, so she just like introduced you to her friends, like just to yeah, meet just, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's very cool. We also have uh, group meetings in Engine during weekends usually, but that's very cool that you had like a chance to talk to her friends, you know, to get to know uh, her and her friends better. Um, okay, and where was she from? Hannah was from New York. She lived um, in a town uh, near near New York. Okay, so how did you schedule your sessions? Did you have any troubles with like the time zones, with scheduling? It was pretty easy, I guess. I don't know. We just found the time uh, every of us was available. So I don't know. We never had any trouble. So sometimes it was a little bit time confusing, exactly when the moment when the time is changing, like twice a year. And but we got it figured out really quickly. So it's not that hard as it seems. Of course, the time difference was pretty. I guess it was pretty big, but no, I think we didn't have any troubles. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right, so you worked with Hannah for a year and a half, that's right. And then how did you decide to be a volunteer? I just saw the application. Uh, I saw the post uh, on Engine Instagram. And I don't know, I always wanted to try. I wanted to see how, it is, how does it feel on the other side of the screen? How does it feel to actually teach something to maybe like even for beginner students? But then I just saw this application. I was like, yes, this is just the fate. So I have to try it. I applied. Um, I just clarified my English knowledge and I got accepted as a volunteer. So that's how my experience started. All right. And did you know like your English level before you joined Engine? Uh, honestly, I never uh, took any tests. Uh, to actually clarify my English level, but I just felt that during this year and a half with Engine as a student, I improved my spoken English so good, so I didn't have any fear to talk to native speakers. Uh, when I was, again, going to different tournaments, I could speak with my friends easily without having uh, any troubles with this uh, bilingual um, thing. So. I felt like I'm ready to uh, keep my lessons in English, to explain something, to explain different examples. So, but I never took any tests, so I didn't have the clarifications. No, that's okay. It's just like uh, when I hear stories of our students that became volunteers, it's very like inspiring, you know, that for a year, a year, year and a half, like you improved your skills and now you want to help others. And now you want to be like a body for other people who are trying to do the same so that's very cool yeah and tell me more about the application process as for the volunteer i think it was pretty the same uh so i again just filled the application but during the interview i think they were more paying attention to my english level so how can i express my opinion and um of course the question were like why do you want to become a volunteer i had to i had to explain myself um why this experience why i wanted to uh, take this experience and but it was pretty the same as a student so it, it was not hard it was like uh, it didn't take that much time because i think when i just applied the uh, first time to engine this application process was way longer so i had to wait like a month right now i think it's really quick it's like it improved a lot yeah, it just also really depends on the time because we have a lot of people, a lot of new people, applicants, students and volunteers. So probably when you were applying as a student, we had a lot of students going on. But then when you were applying as a volunteer, we had like a lot of um, time to process volunteering applications. So that's cool. That's good. And Engine is also growing. We have a big team right now. So it's it happens faster. That's also good. 
All right, so tell me about your mentee, the person that you work with as a volunteer. Uh, so my student, her name is Ira, and we got along so quickly. Uh, she's, I'll say, um, intermediate level of English. So she knows a lot of vocabulary, but the first session, it was so hard for her to speak. And honestly, the thing I enjoyed the most about being a volunteer, I can see the progress of my students. And when I right now join the session and I can explain all of the news to her, she understands everything. She can reply to me. Uh, we can discuss a lot of things. And if she doesn't understand anything, it's, she's free to ask me. So there is no pressure during our sessions. That's what I was trying to achieve during the first uh, month of our meeting, because I wanted to be uh, more like friends, friends atmosphere. So yeah, but it's like really cool. So, and she also, she's from Ukraine. She lives in Ivana from Kiev. And um, yeah, I also, I really love to meet her in person. Oh, that would be cool. Um, and what do you usually do during your sessions? How do you plan them? So we built some kind of a structure of our sessions. Firstly, first month, it was more of a grammar session because um, I needed to see, first of all, what her level is so I can understand how can we move forward. Then we also had a like, vocabulary session, just speak sessions, for example, when something like a lot of news happened in life and you have a lot to tell about, um, we're always talking about it. So, yeah, but we have like a vocabulary session, a grammar session. Sometimes it's just a talking session. So it's all different. And we can play some games as well. This Kahoot thing, we also did that uh, a couple of times. So. Okay, that's very cool. And how do you like track her progress? Do you do any like notes or you just tell her or just correct her when she is wrong? I think it's really easy actually to notice whether she made some progress or not, because when you just talk to her, I think she uh, right now she's using um, more structured sentences, more grammarly correct, and it's just really easy to follow. So I understand that her vocabulary is growing, that um, just in general, she starts to think in English. That's the most important so she can speak. She starts to think more in English and she can uh, express her in an easier way. All right, that's very good. And I'm very happy for your students. Um, okay, and would you say there are like some typical mistakes that all the beginners usually make? Like maybe when you were a student and now when you work with a student, do you notice something? Um, honestly, I don't really think about mistakes because everyone has their technique of learning foreign language. So maybe I don't really think about mistakes. So maybe just like some tips that you can follow so you can see your progress faster. But mm, honestly, I, I don't remember my uh, way of learning English, so I can't really say. But what would you say would be like the most effective uh, methods of learning the language, like practicing speaking or focusing on grammar? Like, What's the best for you? The best way is a combination of everything. So, of course, uh, I think you should just like change um, your whole atmosphere of your living um, and transform it to, for example, if you're learning English, just try to change everything to English. So you have to learn grammar. That's obvious. But you also have to talk to someone. So that's why Engine Program is such a great opportunity because you can talk to natives. And even if you like, you know, a lot of vocabulary, you know, a lot of grammar, but you can't talk. That's the real problem. And Engine helps with that. That's I can I can say this for sure. And yeah, just talking to someone, uh, watching uh, TV shows, series, some films in English, trying to read books. I remember that uh, when I um, started my English journey, I. Uh, I started to read books like for kids, for like 10 years old kids, but because they had like really easy vocabulary and usually books are pretty hard to read when you're like A2, B1. But yeah, I started from a small one and now it's not a problem for me to read just normal books. Okay, well, that's very good. Do you have like a favorite book that you like to read in English? Um, I'm not sure in English, but there is a, a really, really, I'm not sure it's famous, but a really cool uh, TV show, it's called Castle. And there's a, a series of book made from that film and it's called uh, The Nikki Heat. 
the series of books and right now I'm reading it in English and I really enjoy this. This is, it's just, I read this in, in Ukrainian. So in English, it's pretty easier because I already know the plot, but just rereading the book makes me feel so good. Okay, well, that sounds very cool. I will check it out. All right, so the last question from me would be, what would you advise to applicants, both students and volunteers who are right now maybe like just considering applying to Engine? So for students, I think I'd say just never, um, never be afraid of talking to someone. So just open up. I, I'm sure all of the volunteers there, if they apply to Engine, then they are ready to teach you something, to learn from you something. And that's why I should be just open. Even if you're an introvert, I know people like this. It's just like sometimes it's hard for them to uh, talk about some things, to just not feel the pressure during the conversations. Just believe me, it's going to be really easy after. So it's, it's the journey you have to take, but you'll never regret about it. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That was really nice to talk to you today. Uh, yeah, that was Polina, our first guest of our first ever podcast episode. Um, and yeah, that was it for today. So see you in the next episodes. Bye.